Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about Hashimoto's related hair loss and how to stop it. So if you are somebody with thyroid disease, especially Hashimoto's, then you know that one of the most, let's say, severe side effects of, of um, Hashimoto's is hair loss. It's not necessarily the most severe in terms of its, its impact on your health, but certainly its impact on how you know, psychologically, self-confidence, and so on. In fact, it's probably up there, maybe number two, number three, in terms of the most requested symptoms that people address when I get emails. Weight loss, of course, is number one, and number two or number three is always um, hair loss. So it's up there in terms of the things that people are really concerned about. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what causes Hashimoto's hair loss or, or Hashimoto's related hair loss and how to treat it. Because if you understand what type of hair loss that you have, then it's gonna be a lot easier to treat that problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about three types of the hair loss, and we're gonna talk about four causes of the hair loss. So these are different, all right? And it'll make sense as we go through them um, as a, and as I talk about them. So the three types include, um, these are gonna be kind of weird names, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give you the names. They're a little bit medical um, in nature, so don't worry about that. I'll explain what it is. It's gonna be really easy to follow. So the first one is telogen effluvium. Now what this is, is this is just a fancy name to describe diffuse hair loss over your entire scalp. Now diffuse just means evenly uh, distributed throughout. So there are di different types of hair loss. Some cause patchy hair losses in circles and things like that. Others cause hair loss in certain areas like middle pat pattern baldness. This one is diffuse, meaning all throughout your scalp, um, and it's called telogen effluvium. And it is the most common cause of hair loss in Hashimoto's patients. And it's caused, well, we'll talk about um, the, the main causes below. These are just the types right now. So that's number one. Number two is alopecia areata. Now this is the autoimmune um, type of hair loss that can occur in Hashimoto's patients, but it causes a different type or pattern of hair loss. And it usually causes patchy or circular areas of hair loss throughout the scalp. So you might just have a circle here that starts to thin. You might have one here, here. It, it can happen anywhere on the scalp. It can be a different in, in terms of its size and so on. It kind of looks like a bald spot if you've ever had one or if you've seen somebody with a bald spot. That's kind of what it resembles. And this is caused by an autoimmune disease. And again, we'll talk about this in a little bit um, in, in a second here. I just want to introduce you to the idea. Now, the last one is androgenetic alopecia. Now, this is caused by a hormone imbalance and it usually results in male pattern baldness. So usually a thinning kind of up here um, and it can thinning as you kind of to come back over the front of the area or at the top of the scalp and it can also cause hair loss in the very back so if you can think about you know a man who's losing his losing his hair that can actually cause or that can actually occur in a woman with Hashimoto's we can actually occur in women who don't have Hashimoto's as well but that pattern of hair loss occurs and it can frequently occur in people who have Hashimoto's so these are the three main types now as you think about these types the reason we care is because each one has a different treatment and each one has a different cause okay so you have to sort of determine what type of hair loss you're experiencing what pattern do you follow? And I'll be explaining through when we talk about the causes, which ones you should be more focused on as we go through these things. So remember, these were the types. Now let's talk about the causes. These are specific to people who have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, number one, I would say this is probably the most, uh, not probably, this just is the most um, common cause of hair loss, and that is from decreased thyroid function. And this results in the telogen effluvium that I mentioned previously, which is a diffuse hair loss over the entire scalp. Okay, so what that means is if you have Hashimoto's and you have hair loss throughout your entire scalp, it's probably from telogen effluvium and it's most likely caused by decreased thyroid function. Now remember, in the pathophysiology of Hashimoto's, it's really simple. Your body attacks your thyroid gland, it damages your thyroid gland, and you're no longer able to produce enough thyroid hormone. Therefore, thyroid hormone levels drop and you will feel worse and you will lose your hair. Very simple, right? That's how the majority of people experience it. Now the problem is when people treat this telogen effluvium, they're not actually getting treated appropriately because they're not replacing whatever thyroid hormone is lost in their body. So a lot of this is going to be necessary if you wanna treat this particular problem, you need to make sure that your thyroid medication is optimized, right? Not too much, not too little, uh, because if you go too much, you'll have hair loss, and if you go too little, you'll continue to experience hair loss. So you kinda have to get that Goldilocks level of optimal um, thyroid medication for your body. Now, also, you don't necessarily have to use medication. You can use supplements and you can go the natural route, natural route, provided you catch it early enough, right? So I have other videos where, in which I talk about how likely you are to uh, resolve or to not necessarily cure, but to potentially improve significantly your, your um, autoimmune disease. And it depends on how early you catch it. If you can catch it early, you have a much higher chance of going the natural route. If you've had Hashimoto's for 20 to 30 years, it's probably not gonna work as well. It'll still work to some degree, but probably not as well, which means you will be more reliant upon thyroid medication if this is your problem. You'll need that thyroid medication to dial in your thyroid function to reduce that hair loss and that hair fall. So that's number one. Remember, these are the causes. Number two, autoimmune related hair loss. Okay, so you should know this, probably you already know this, but I'm gonna reiterate it. 
if you have one autoimmune disease, you are far more likely to have another autoimmune disease. So they go together. They often go together in pairs or even triplets. Okay. So what can happen, especially in Hashimoto's, is there are certain things that go together. So autoimmune or Hashimoto's thyroiditis can pair really well with celiac disease, which is the autoimmune disease to gluten. It pairs really well with vitiligo. Not pairs really well is a wrong way to describe it. I'm just saying these often go together. So we have celiac disease in Hashimoto's. We have um, what was the previous one that I mentioned? Uh, celiac disease. Uh, vitiligo, which is a depigmentation of the skin, um, which often goes with, with Hashimoto's as well. And now we have the hair loss component, which is, which is alopecia areata. So these things can come together. You, you might even end, end up with all of them at once, okay? Which would be very unlucky, unlucky if you actually have them. But what we do know is that autoimmune diseases tend to go together. Now, this is, thank goodness, this is not as common as, let's say, the diffuse alopecia, which people experience with decreased thyroid function. So the autoimmune-related hair loss is caused by alopecia areata. And again, those are those patchy sort of circles that you find all over your scalp and all over your head. Now, the way to treat that is to fix your immune function. Improving your thyroid is important still, right? Because not only if you have Hashimoto's, you'll have that decreased thyroid function, but if you have the autoimmune related hair loss, you're gonna to have to treat your immune function to fix that particular cause of hair loss. So you can treat your thyroid all you want and it will you know, give you more energy and things like that, but it may not help your hair loss if it's caused by your immune system. So you have to focus on your immune system. Again, I have all sorts of resources and videos and help that will teach you sort of how to improve your immune system, but just understand that treating your immune system if you have alopecia areata is more important than treating your thyroid. Obviously you should do both, no matter what, but some people focus on one or the other and they kind of neglect the other. So focus on immune system if it's alopecia areata. Number three, we have hormone imbalances. Now this is that one that I mentioned which was, which was androgenetic alopecia, and this is primarily caused by changes in testosterone levels. So I, I have videos on this as well, but what happens is in the state of low thyroid function, it impacts negatively your testosterone, your estrogen, and your progesterone, which are your sex hormones. And these sex hormones are also involved in helping to some degree regulate hair growth um, and the hair cycle, right? The hair growth cycle, um, which means that if you don't have enough testosterone, or if you have too much testosterone, and same thing with estrogen, then you will experience certain types of hair loss. Now, men, usually through its metabolism of testosterone, they're more prone to experience those, that testosterone-related male pattern baldness, okay? So, but again, women can experience it too, and that's called androgenetic alopecia, and this can be caused in women because of changes to testosterone, because of changes to your thyroid, right? So if you have this type of hair loss, which is, again, the thinning of the hair in the front and the thinning in the back here, and sort of the, um, uh, I forget what they're called, but the peaks that kind of come back um, on, on men's heads that you see all the time. If you're experiencing that type of hair loss, then look to your testosterone levels. And the key here is to manage your testosterone levels, manage testosterone metabolism, so you can take supplements which impact that metabolism process, and also to treat your thyroid. Because if you treat your thyroid, that should at least help to normalize your testosterone uh, levels, as well as testosterone metabolism, which will improve this type of hair loss. That's number four, or that's number three. Number four now, we have nutrient deficiencies. Now these can be common among a lot of thyroid, a lot of patients with Hashimoto's. And I think they're probably, they're almost always associated with one of the other three that we've already talked about, right? Very rarely do I ever see a patient with Hashimoto's who has perfectly normal nutrient levels, but just happens to have hair loss and just needs to take um, thyroid medication or a couple supplements and boom, their hair, their hair grows back. It's usually not quite that simple, okay? So these nutrient deficiencies occur because of how your thyroid impacts your intestinal health, uh, the certain levels of uh, uh, concentrations of bacteria inside of your gut, stomach acid levels, and how well you absorb certain nutrients. So if these levels are low, and I'm gonna talk about specifically the ones that you wanna look at, then you will experience hair loss. Now, usually they will, they will kind of go in and, and blend into number one, which is that diffuse hair loss all over the head. So make sure if you're experiencing hair loss and you have Hashimoto's, you look specifically at these nutrient levels. Now I'm gonna go over four here. There's plenty, there's more than this, but these are probably the most common. So number one is iron. Definitely far and away the most important in terms of hair loss. In fact, when you look at clinical studies, we see that women with hair, healthy ferritin levels have a ferritin, which is a marker of how much iron you have in your body, by the way. That level is usually about 77 in these women. So healthy women who don't have problems with hair loss have a level of about 77. Now, women who have Hashimoto's have a much, high, or much lower level of ferritin, which indicates they have a much lower level of iron. And if you don't have enough iron, then you cannot grow your hair. It's just, Pretty, pretty simple, it's as simple as that. Now, most people don't associate iron with hair growth because these things aren't intuitive, but it actually is very, very, very important. And this is why, by the way, that a lot of women who take uh, multivitamins for pregnancy, a pregnancy a multivitamin, which has iron in it, they experience hair growth. They're like, oh, this is amazing. Uh, I don't know why it's growing my hair, but they, they associate it with that pregnancy, uh, the prenatal vitamin. But in reality, it's the iron. They, they just didn't realize that they were so low on iron when they replaced it, their hair grew. Okay, so you need to look at your ferritin level. Um, in terms of levels, uh, I would say somewhere between 40 and 60, you actually don't want too much iron in your body or it can cause problems. But 
if you want to match the level of healthy controls in women who have no problems with hair loss, that level is about 77 picograms per liter, um, just FYI. And another important one, especially in thyroid patients, I'm going to combine these two together, that includes zinc and selenium. Again, these are important cofactors and minerals required for hair growth inside of the hair follicle. And people who have Hashimoto's, they tend to have lower levels than these. So if you can replace those, replete those levels, then it will. you can at least be sure that it's not going to cause or that is at least, that problem is not going to impede your hair growth. Now, it just also so happens that these are very beneficial for thyroid function. So it's probably the case that these impact thyroid function and also impact hair follicles independent of their impact on thyroid function, which makes them very, very important for patients who have Hashimoto's. And I recommend these supplements. I have tons of videos on these, just so you know. Other ones that which are kind of less common include uh, vitamin B12, as well as the whole spectrum of B vitamins, which again are also required for hair growth. So um, if you are somebody who is experiencing low B12 levels, there's a high, and again, a lot of Hashimoto's patients experience this problem, then there's a good chance that you also have other B vitamin deficiencies as well. So taking a wide array of B complex B, uh, biotin, B12, et cetera, or getting B12 shots, this can also be beneficial in replacing all those levels back up to where they should be in the healthy state. Now, if you go over these four main causes and think about the types that I mentioned in the past, you should be able to pinpoint and narrow which particular type of hair loss you're experiencing, and that should allow you to better figure out which treatment option you need, and that can help you regrow your hair. Now, with, with very few exceptions, I've been able to use this sort of algorithm or um, protocol, if you want to call it that, to help people with, uh, help patients with Hashimoto's regrow their hair. Now it's not universal. There's still a couple people that I think have really, really strong genetic components to hair loss, which are very difficult to treat, but using this information should help the majority of you, probably 95 plus percent of you improve your hair growth, or at least get it to grow back, or at least slow it down, right? In some capacity, it will help you with your hair loss. So if you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments below. If you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information, all designed to help thyroid patients just like you feel better. So if you like this sort of stuff, I think you'll love those resources as well. Now, that's all I have for you guys today. So otherwise, I will see you in the next one.